डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी टी वाई बी ए इंग्लिश कोर्स where we are dealing with paper number 9 that is form of drama this is our second lecture on the play hey vadana by kirish karnad in the previous lecture friends we have already discussed the term modern indian theater right that is with specific reference of essays by ganesh deshpande and aparna darwadkar we have understood how the shift comes to indian drama during colonial as well as post colonial time period specifically during the period of post colonial that is post independence period some of the major playwrights come to the forefront such as dharmveer bharti mohan rakesh vijay tendulkar राइट बादल सरकार चंद्रशेखर कांबर के एन पानीकर सतीश आलेकर उत्पल दत्त हबीब तनवीर महाश्वेता देवी जी पी देशपांडे एंड अवर ओन दैट इज गिरीश कर्नाड हूज प्ले इज वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी और डिस्कस इन दिस यूनिट टुडे वी विल बिगिन विथ कर्नाड and his style of writing now born in the year 1938 in matheran and brought up in dharwad girish karnad went to oxford university with rhodes scholarship that is r h o d e s rhodes scholarship he returned to india in the year 1960 and he worked for oxford university press in madras for 6 years some of his popular works they are tugluk hai vadana as we are going to study the play nagamandala yayati bali the sacrifice and many others so one of the significant points here is to see how karnad uses various myth and history as the major subjects of his play so for that friends let us get the brief overview of various subjects that his plays deal with his first play that is yayati right it was karnad's first play it was written in the year 1960 and it was originally published in the book form in year 1961 it was based on the episode from the indian epic mahabharata all of us are aware of the character of yayati in mahabharata he was one of the ancestors of the pandavas in mahabharata the play revolves around the character of yayati as we all are aware of the popular myth that was surrounded uh, he, he is given the curse by parshuram uh, by sorry shukracharya who was his father in law shukracharya cursed him because of yayati's uh, own uh, infidelity right that was towards his wife who was shukracharya's own daughter so he was cursed by shukracharya but he was also told that he could redeem this curse only if someone is willing to exchange his youth with him that is with yayati and it was finally his son puru right who offers to do this for his own father the play examines the dilemma that it presents uh, for yayati it was also yayati puru and puru's young wife whose conflict is shown in the drama yayati is highly remarkable because Karn- karnad introduces the sutradhar that is the anchor in the play who comes on the stage and introduces the characters as well as informs the audience that the play is mythical in nature 
his one of the masterpieces that is obviously Tughlaq. So Tughlaq according to Ranjit Hoskot is I quote it's a play about the inevitability of corruption showing up Tughlaq's cruel side. The play is full of allusions and combines a historical flavor with a contemporary relevance. I unquote. It was written in Kannada in the year 1964 and portrays the life of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, right? Uh, about whom Karnad himself says, and I again put in quote, certainly the most brilliant individual ever to ascend on the throne of Delhi and also one of the biggest failures, and I unquote. Nagamandla, another play, very popular play, was based on two oral tales from the region of Karnataka. It deals with the issue of gender bias and oppression of women in the patriarchal society. It is about a story of a girl called Rani who wants to earn the affection and love of her husband who is completely indifferent to her and who visits the other women. Rani decides to drug her husband with a love root which she mixes in the curry in order to win her husband's love and affection. However, by mistake what happens that it reaches to the cobra who consumes it and as per the magical roots effect, the cobra falls in love with Rani and in disguise of Rani's husband, cobra visits Rani every night. Soon she becomes pregnant and she is accused of adultery by her actual husband. The news reaches obviously to the village panchayat and she is asked, to prove her fidelity in front of the entire village. So, now in order to prove her fidelity, she has to put her hand inside a snake's hole. She is ordered by the village panchayat to prove her chastity like Sita did in Ramayan. Rani puts her hand in the hole, right, in the same hole from where the cobra used to come. And nothing happens to her, of course. And she is declared to be innocent. Giving his views on this play Nagamandala, Markin Piranjipe, he writes, and I again put a quote, This is a fine play, powerful, gripping and exciting. It uses tradition creatively and sensitively. It is fast-paced, well-plotted, coherent and controlled. I unquote. So, I would like to draw your attention to one of the significant aspects of Kernard's play and that is his use of myth, history and folklore which is quite visible in all of the plays that we have discussed here briefly. They are for example, look at Haivadana, look at Tughlaq, look at Nagamandala, right? So, all of these plays use some way or the other the uh, myth or the history. Now, Aparna Dharwarkar's argument in Karnad's uh, is that Karnad creates his narrative with use of myth, history and folklore to evoke the ancient world which gets reflected in the contemporary context. This is very important argument by her. What Kernard himself says here is, and let me put uh, Kernard's own words here into quotation. After writing Tughlaq, I participated in many seminars on drama in Karnataka as well as other states. Wherever I went, scholars always discuss the importance and the usefulness of our folk theatre and folk culture. I did not have a rural background and the only theatre I was acquainted with was urban commercial theatre. I do not have any live contact with folk theatre, but I was curious about the folk form of theatre. 
I had to acquire knowledge of the conventions and technicalities of the folk theatre. But what I realized at the end of my study was a very surprising thing. Now I am convinced that there is no difference between the theatre conventions of classical drama and those of the folk drama. The principles that govern their dramatic aesthetics are the same. For example, and Karnat provides the example here that the function of the Sutradhar in the classical drama is same as that of the Bhagavata in the folklore. So friends, you must have reminded of Bhagavata in our discussion of the plot of Havadana in a previous lecture. So it is very important here friends to note that such a vibrant culture of orality is no longer available to the western playwright and Karnad being a modern playwright is fully aware of that even in India also this culture will not be survived for a long. Why? Because due to the process of urbanization, westernized education and the western civilization as well as the economic development. So friends, discussing about his play Hevadana in the last lecture, uh, Karnad says, I remember, I again put Karnad's words in quote, I remember that the idea of my play Hevadana started crystallizing in my head right in the middle of the argument with B. V. Karnad about the meaning of masks in the Indian theatre and theatre's relationship to music. So friends, you must be reminded of the use of mask in Haivadana. In the previous lecture, we have already seen how Haivadana combines a 12th century folklore about transposing the head. This culture of transposing head is not, however, a new to Indian culture as Anand Mahadevan, in one of his articles, argue that the Indian myths provide huge source of folk tales or narratives of switching the heads. How? So, for example, the very, very popular example of Lord Ganesha, right? We all know the Ganesha, the elephant-headed god who was beheaded by his own father, Lord Shiva. And when the father, Shiva, realized his own mistake that he killed his own son, he restores his son to life by attaching the uh, first head of any animal that he meets the first in, uh, in his way. And he comes across the elephant first and thus the head of an elephant became Ganesha's head. So, uh, do you remember how the play Haivadana begins with uh, the uh, prayer to Lord Ganesha? Remember that we discussed this in last lecture? So, here Ganesha indirectly refers to the possible event of transposing heads in the play also. As we know that Hevadana, the play, is inspired from folk tale, right? In Samdev's Kathasarit Sagar, right? Uh, so, uh, as well as it was also inspired from Thomas Mann's play, The Transposed Head. Kathasarit Sagar, written around... Uh, in 1070 AD, where the story of King Vikramaditya, who is asked to fetch a corpse, and this corpse is possessed by a famous demon called Vetal. We all are aware of the story of Vikram and Vetal. So, in between, demon every time narrates a story with a puzzle at the end, and uh, the moment King Vikramaditya answers this puzzle, he flies away. If the king does not answer 
purposefully so if he knows the answer and if he does not uh, answer it then he will be died so thus the 24 stories are told with the riddle at the end every time vikram has to solve the puzzle the last story is the heads that got switched now this story where a washerman dhavala falls in love with madan sundari the beautiful daughter of another washerman and he marries her while he is enjoying fruits of a happy marriage and married life madan sundari's brother visits them now what happened that uh, he requests that all of three uh, go to a trip to the festival of the goddess parvati now dhavala enters the great temple of parvati empty handed and when he realizes this he uh, he was very much uh, uh, grief and uh, in his grief what he did he uh, uh, beheaded himself with the sacrificial sword as he offered his own head to the goddess now banan sundari's brother when he discovers uh, the beheaded crops and in his grief he also beheaded himself with the same sword now madan sundari was completely unaware of this chapter and in his anxiety when he tried to uh, see uh, what happened in the temple when he she entered this temple he confronted uh, by this horrified sight and she also decided to end her life however the goddess who was very much pleased with the devotion of all the three she stops madan sundari and uh, she allows her to bring the two men back to the life by reattaching their heads to their bodies once again so madan sundari who was very much excited in her excitement and her haste what she did that she transposed the head that means she put the head of her husband on the brother's body and her brother's head on the husband's body now the story ends with a riddle that the king must answer correctly and what was the riddle or the question which of these two mixed up people is now her husband the king replies the one with the husband's head is her husband because it is always the head which rules the limbs and personal identity is always depends on the head now affirming the superiority of the intellect over the body right is very very important in this answer uh, another superiority that we come across in this is the spirit over the body now thomas mann in his novella with the similar plot right here what happened that man takes a idea uh, and he writes that brahmin uh, shrimadan falls for sita and nanda uh, who is cowherd and very good friend of shri shridaman arranges the marriage the story follows the indian myth and sita again transposes the head and starts her new life with the head of shridaman and the body of nanda now unlike vikram's story right what man's uh, story have uh, does here is man's novella does not end here it is continued with the second episode where after having a child called samadhi sita runs back to nanda and finally both nanda and shridaman kills each other and sita immolates herself on the burning pyre so she becomes sati here this plot which resembles to the plot of hevadana and which we have studied in detail in the previous lecture is actually thomas mann's own imagination and creativity the significant aspect of this folklore which was not available in kathasarit sagar and which is conspicuous in karnad's play is class caste and race distinction
So that is a very important point here. Both Man and Karnar uses the power of myth in words of Madhavan to show how the social differences created by caste and class are amplified by modern economic and political structures in a deeply segmented post-colonial Indian society. Some other important issues that required here uh, in our discussion is the theme of incompleteness. Haivadana is one of the classic example of the idea of incompleteness. As we can see in the picture uh, right uh, on the screen, Haivadana wants to become a complete man as he is half horse and half man. He prays to goddess Kali but she makes him a complete horse instead of a complete man. Even after goddesses make him a complete horse, he feels the incompleteness due to uh, he still possesses the voice of a human. He feels complete when finally achieves his knee of horse in the end of the story. The character of Devdat reflects intelligence, whereas the character of uh, uh, his friend, it shows, uh, that is Kapila, he shows the strength. So, that is another example of incompleteness because both the characters are not truly complete. After the exchange of both heads, uh, momentarily we can uh, say probably that Devdat is in better position as he gets the muscular body of Kapila along with his own brain, which makes him to some extent complete. But later on uh, in the uh, narrative, we realize that his body starts getting in the same shape which it used to be. Further, Kapila gets the body of Devnath, which marks him more common and as soft as Devdath is. It gives him the feeling of incompleteness. Another important point that we need to discuss here is the character of Padmini and how strong uh, is her character among rest of the characters in the play. She represents all those Indian women who are not able to express their desire for love and sexuality. She who gets married to Devdat is not just happy with his intellect but also wants the muscular body of Kapila. In short, she is not happy with one thing but she desires a fine combination of intelligence and physical strength in a men. Her strong ideas got reflected in the female chorus and let me put a quote, why should love stick to the sap of a single body, a head for each breast, a pupil for each eye, a side of each arm, I have neither regret nor shame and I unquote. In fact, when she in hurry transposed the heads, she is not ashamed to walk out with the body of Kapila and the intellectual head of her actual husband, which was her secret desire, a complete body, a muscular body and the intelligent head, the combination that she wanted. So finally, I would wrap up here with what we have discussed till now. We have discussed the idea of modern Indian theatre, Karnad's writing style and use of myth, folklore and the history in his work to show how the contemporary issues with the ancient glasses. We also discussed Haivadana and various significant aspects of the play such as the idea of incompleteness, desire and sexuality. So friends, 
we have discussed in this lecture the idea of play Hayvadana. We have also discussed Girish Karnad and his style of writing, the importance of myth and folklore as the subject in his play. And we have discussed Padmini's character, her desire in terms of sexuality. And we also discuss the theme of incompleteness in this lecture. So overall in this two lectures, I hope you guys have enjoyed the and understood the play Hevadana by Girish Karnad. Thank you so much. See you once again in the next lecture. Thank you.